Good morning, everyone. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. And as we enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, we enter your courts with praise because we believe that this is a day that you've made and we will rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Let's praise God this morning. Hallelujah. For he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Let's make it personal. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he's my Lord. And my knee shall bow, and my knee shall bow. And my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ Hallelujah, we glorify thy name, Jesus. We magnify thy name, Lord. We lift up our voices unto thee, O Lord. We magnify thy name, Jesus. Hallelujah, we glorify you, Jesus. We magnify thy name, O God. Hallelujah, we worship you, Lord. We glorify thy name, Jesus. Hallelujah, we magnify thy name, Jesus. We glorify thy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, good morning on this Sunday morning. Can we bow our hearts before the Lord and pray over the word that will be shared this morning? Father in heaven, again we come before you in the wonderful name of Jesus, thanking you for your grace, your goodness, and your mercy, Lord God. And we just ask this morning that your Holy Spirit would anoint your word as we speak, Lord God. Concerning you, Lord, because you go before us in all things and you never leave us nor forsake us. Encourage us this morning, we pray, Jesus, in your name. Amen. And amen. You know, God has encouraged us that if we believe in him, he will give us strength no matter what we're dealing with. Here are seven truths that we learn from God's word that gives us strength, peace, and encouragement that we can find in him in our troubles. Number one, he quiets us with his love so we should not worry. Some of you worry too much and you don't realize that God is always with us. In Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one will save. Listen to this. He will rejoice over you with gladness and he will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. He quiets us with his love. That's why we shouldn't even worry. How does he do that? Well, because when we look into Jesus, the face of Jesus in our prayer closets, 
We have the presence of God knowing that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. These are promises all through the Bible that his love is always going to be with us. And his love surpasses all understanding. It's because God is always with us. You must remember that during all of your troubles that God is always with you. And we find this in Matthew 6 in verse 34. Jesus said this to his disciples. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Some of you got a lot of troubles upon your life. But some people are very troubled today because of this sickness and virus that's plaguing the whole world. But we must continue to put our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that God's healing touch will be upon us. We don't know when God is going to call us home. And we put our lives in God's providence. But at the same time, we pray, we believe, and then we trust God and say, Thy will is done. But we're always believing for healings. Because Jesus said for the believer, you could lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And that's what we do in faith. We do not shrink back in unbelief, but we go forward in faith. Amen? The second truth we find in the word of God is that God gives us peace. Now there's the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. We find this in the scriptures. And John said this in John 14, verse 27. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Notice the peace that God gives us is not like the world tries to give us. I mean, when two people are arguing back and forth and finally they settle the argument and there's peace, it means they're not arguing anymore. Jesus is not talking about this. He's talking about an inner peace that comes from knowing Christ Jesus. And why do we have this peace upon our hearts? It's because we know that he's always with us and that he is the one that always goes before us in all things. In other words, God has a plan for our lives and that plan is working out once we give our lives to Jesus Christ. Everything works together for good, Paul said in another place, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. My friends, you are loved by God and you are called according to his purpose. Amen? So we don't fear all these things that happen. And we don't let this trouble so grip our hearts that we lose the peace of God which he has given us so much of. Notice in this scripture that it says, neither let it be afraid. In other words, your heart. Don't let your heart be troubled, but don't let it be afraid. In other words, there are troubles that come upon us. But we shouldn't fear because perfect love casts out all fear. That's what the Bible says. So we look to Jesus and we put our trust in him. Yes, it's natural to act in our carnal nature, in our human nature when something happens to us. But then we as Christians should be able to just get right back into the spirit. And we should be able to go to God and say, I know my Redeemer liveth." And that we can do because we know that Jesus is living inside of us. Amen? Look at this in Isaiah, chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. You will keep him in perfect peace. That is, God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. This is what Isaiah knew. And he's the one who saw the Lord high and lifted up. Because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength. You see, God gives us strength when we feel we're weak. The Bible says that when we're weak, we can be strong. It's almost like an oxymoron. How could you be weak and then also be strong at the same time? Because the strength that we have comes from within. It doesn't come from without. It doesn't come from exercising the muscles on our body. It's a strength that God gives us because his power is working mightily within us by his Holy Spirit. Amen? That's the kind of peace that we want in our lives. But you know, there's a lot of people whose minds are, their minds are wandering today. They wander too much watching news and there's so much bad news and conflicting news. 
You know, you can tell the devil has taken over all of the flow of information. It is so polluted, it's very hard to tell what is truth and what is false today. Because those who make their points seem to be so truthful. But in reality, when you measure it to facts, they don't necessarily line up. Maybe it's time that we shut off a lot of the news and we get back into the good news. And we get back into the, what the scripture says is good news. That Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. And those who give their hearts to Jesus Christ, God will move upon them and not only save their souls and grant them eternal life, but he fills them with his Holy Spirit that they might know his will and they might know what is truth versus what is error. We can have our eyes opened, as Paul said, and be enlightened to know the hope of our calling in Christ Jesus. Amen? Number three, we should always cast our burdens on the Lord. We find this in Psalm 55, verse 22, such a poignant scripture. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. I mean, some of you should grab a hold of this scripture and say, yes, I'm going to make it the scripture of mine. I'm going to cast my burdens on the Lord. In other words, throw them on the Lord. Say, Lord, here, I can't take it anymore. I'm giving it up to you, Lord. And what does the Bible say? Will he reject you? No. I mean, Jesus himself said in Matthew, come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And what? You shall find rest for your souls. Boy, that's a comforting scripture. Amen. Psalm 55, 22, you should write it down. And you should say, Lord, I'm casting all my burdens on you, all my troubles, all my worries, Lord. I'm going to just put it on you because I know that you're going to sustain me, Lord. And what does the, Lord, the, the word sustain mean? It means that you are not going to be moved. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. That's Psalm 55, 22. You should grab a hold of that and write it down. It summarizes up what we do in our troubles, amen? And number four, we need to learn to make Jesus our refuge. And a refuge is a safe place. I mean, there are a lot of college students looking for a safe place because people are making them feel offended with words. That is absolutely ridiculous. I've never thought in history that we would ever see a time where people would just say, I am so crushed, I need a safe place because somebody said something I disagree with. And hurts my feelings. Only in America can we have something like this. In this pseudo society that we've created. But yet we know what the word of God says. The safe place that we have. Is the Lord. That's our safe place. Psalm 9 verses 9 and 10. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Let's break this down. The Lord's a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. Brothers and sisters, we know there's a lot of trouble today. A lot of people are still troubled. And this COVID-19 virus is something that's plaguing the whole world. But the Bible says that we should be going to God in this time of trouble because he is our refuge. And in verse 10 again, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. You see, if you know the name of Jesus and you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart and mind, that should be the first name that comes on your lips in times of trouble. You call out to the Lord. And what does the Bible say? Those who call out on the name of the Lord shall be saved and the last part of verse 10 in Psalm 9 for you Lord have not forsaken those who seek you seek the Lord and you will find him if you search for him with all of your heart that's a scripture seek him just get alone with Jesus and talk to him take a walk outside Somewhere, your backyard or something. 
Of course, you have to practice the social distancing that everybody says to do. But the point is to get along with Jesus or in the solitude of your own home. Get alone and talk to Jesus. If you do that, I tell you right now, the Bible says that he hears you. He will not forsake those who seek him. In other words, he's going to listen to your prayers and your requests. And he's going to cause everything to work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We must believe these things in the word of God so that we can have faith rise up within us and understand it's always God who is going before us to prepare the way Number five, always seek the Lord in his strength. We talked about seeking the Lord in point four, but point five here. Look at 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11. Seek the Lord in his strength. And of course, the you is understood there. You seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. How do you seek the faith, face of Jesus? You get along with him. And you start talking to Jesus. You pour out all your burdens. You cast your burdens upon him. You understand that God's going to be there and you don't have anything to worry about. He will quiet you, as we said, with his love. He's going to grant you peace. Because if Jesus is your refuge, he's going to give you strength as you seek him. Amen? Psalm 34, verse 10. I love this scripture. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Let me read that again. Psalm 34, verse 10. The young lions lack and, see, uh, and, and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Number six. Encourage people to build them up. You see, we might not be able to meet right now physically in our church facility, but we're meeting together spiritually in our homes. And as we're listening to this message together from the Word of God, God encourages our hearts. But we're still a local church. We're still waiting to be able to get the release, to be able to come back to our church fellowship, the facility here. And that will happen in a few weeks, God willing. But until that time, we stay together and we recognize that we are brothers and sisters and that we're, we're, we're members one of another. And the body of Christ is made up of many individuals and every individual in the church is just as important as everyone else. So therefore, during this time when we're separated physically, call each other up. Call some people and say, hey, you know what? I haven't talked to so-and-so in a while. I'm going to encourage that individual. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. In other words, the Apostle Paul, when he was speaking to the church at Thessalonica, he was just reminding of them, uh, reminding them of the things that they were already practicing, but continue to do it. Continue to encourage each other, especially times of trouble like this and these times of uh, this plague that has struck the world today. More than ever, the church needs to rise up and be the church and be the light of the world and let God see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Let men see these works. They see our good works, there, and guess what? God gets glorified. The last point, number seven, always remember God is with you and will never leave or forsake you. You know, some people think that God is with us when we're doing good, and then if we get in the flesh, then God leaves us. And then we got to beg him to come back. It doesn't work that way. This is not in the old covenant where the Holy Spirit would come upon people, and then he would leave people. But when Jesus said, that when he was going to go away, he would not leave his comfortless, but he would send the Holy Spirit, the great comfort, and he would be with us forever. And I know on the day of Pentecost, they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
And your Pentecost happens when you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of your sins, and on the third day he rose from the dead. He's the only Savior to save us from sins. If you say, Jesus, save my soul, forgive me for my sins, then God will save your soul and grant you eternal life and fill you with your Pentecost, which is the day when the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the immersion of the Holy Spirit came upon 120 in the upper room. And for every believer, as we see that Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you, to those in Judea, Samaria, to those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And friends, if you're listening to this message and you feel a tug on your heart and you're not a part of this local fellowship but you just turned in, you tuned in and you're convicted in your heart, give your life to Jesus. Just say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might know what you want me to do in this life until I leave this world. God will receive you, my friends. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8 as we close. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Let me read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. So do not fear or be dismayed. Do you believe the word of God? If you do, faith and peace will come to your heart. You'll know that he's quieting you with his love and you will not worry, as we said. He'll give you his peace. And we learn to cast all of our burdens on the Lord. We make Jesus our refuge. And we always seek the Lord in his strength. And he will always be there for us to strengthen and encourage us. Amen. And then with the encouragement that God gives to us, we can encourage everyone else and build each other up. And then, of course, we will always remember that God is with us. Amen. He'll never leave us. He will never forsake us. Incredible thing is that Jesus was really quoting when he said, Hello, I am with you always to the end of the age. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He was quoting from Deuteronomy. In fact, Deuteronomy is the book that Jesus quoted quite a bit. But for us, as we read the word of God and as we've read the scriptures today, grip them into your heart and believe that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. There have been some families that have been struggling with this virus. And we know that Alan Adcock, his father, 91 years old, he passed away. He caught the COVID virus, and uh, he was buried, and uh, he knew the Lord. Alan got to talk to him um, before he passed. And then we also have Rose Vincent and her father, Eric. Uh, her father, Eric, had passed away. He was 71 years old, and uh, he'll be buried Monday. So we want to keep these families in prayer. And if you know of anyone else in our church fellowship or even not in our church fellowship but friends or family members that are ill with the virus, please contact Jess and I and we will pray for them and put them on our prayer list and we'll be sure to believe that God will move. We need to put our faith and our trust in God. Amen. Also, Lance and Druen, I know that they, they are recovering and I... I uh, Heard from Lance uh, yesterday, and he said they got one more week of quarantine, but they're doing okay. So if you hear of anybody else, please contact me and let us know. Amen. I'd like to close in a word of prayer right now for our church fellowship and for family and friends. Let's bow our hearts and pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for your abiding presence, Lord, and we are encouraged by the word of God this morning. But, Lord, we lift up the families that are suffering this illness, those who have lost loved ones. We ask, O oh God, that you, Lord, would touch them and comfort them with the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray, O oh God, for those that need to go through this, 
Lord Jesus, we pray for the peace of God which surpasses all understanding to guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And Lord, until we can meet physically as a local church together and assemble together as the scriptures say in Hebrews, Lord, we will assemble in our homes, Lord God, and we'll stay faithful to each other, faithful to our local churches, wherever that local church is. And God, that we, Lord God, know that you will always be faithful to us we're praying, oh God, that you would rid, Lord God, this nation and the world of this virus. Give the scientists, Lord God, and all those working hard, Lord, to find, Lord God, antivirals and a vaccine, Lord, the wisdom and the knowledge to do this with a quick work, Lord. And we pray again, Lord, for all of those that are working, Lord, in the hospitals, the doctors and the nurses, support people, our policemen and our firemen, those who have to go to work, Lord God. Lord, in the essential uh, businesses, Lord God, we pray, oh God, that once again we'll be able to open up, Lord God, this nation. But until, Lord, we get the okay, Father, we will practice, Lord God, what we've been asked to do, and that is, Lord, social distancing, wearing masks when we go outside, Lord God, when we're near people, Lord Jesus, and keep six feet away, Lord God, and also wear gloves and wash our hands, Lord. But most of all, Lord, we're going to look to you, Father, in all of our trouble. We ask these things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the church says, Amen. Until we meet again in our homes next Sunday, God bless you all.